Hello, this is Rang Swami from India. Uh, in this video, I would like to say something important matter, some important information about the Hazlitt and his works. At the end of this video, you should be able to examine the reflective and pensive mode of the author, spell out the manner in which Hazlitt reveals the feeling of immortality in youth. Write that according to Hazlitt is the significance of youth. Let's go now see the introduction to Hazlitt and his works. William Hazlitt, 1778-1830, an English writer, worked as journalist, dramatic critic and painter, but is remembered for his essays. His interest included politics, philosophy, literature and all the arts, but he was basically a student of human life and liberty and it is the humanity of his essays that gives them permanent value. He lived by his pen and his writings were voluminous. Though his intellect was brilliant, his style of writing has no conscious artistry or literary pretensions, moody as he was at times, peevish and whimsical as he could be, and there was a fine quality of joy about Hazlitt. It is this quality of joy that gives the sparkle and relish to his essays. William Hazlitt, friend and contemporary of Charles Lamb, was born in 1778 and brought up in an atmosphere of progressive thought. His early ambition was to become a portrait painter and his interest in the heart is abused in his character sketches. In his twenties, he turned to journalism, writing for the Morning Chronicle and the Edinburgh Review. As a reviewer, he did signal service and courageously defending Keats' poetry against scandalous criticism. His married life was not a happy one as it was married by unfortunate love affairs. His biographers say that he was a quarrelsome and unamiable man. He died in 1830 at the age of 52. His lit essays may be grouped into two classes, essays in literary criticism and essays on miscellaneous subjects. Some critics are of the opinion that Hazlitt's accomplishment lies in literary criticism, characters of Shakespeare's plays, lectures on the English poets and the English comic writers, they indicate his mighty intellect and imaginative sympathy in comprehending works of art. Others observe that Hazlitt is miscellaneous essays or superior to his critical essays. His reputation as a great master of rules is established by the two volumes, Table Talk and Round Table. He was able to write interestingly on a wide range of topics. His style has been highly prized for its combination of vigor and ease its rhythm, its clarity, and the absence of its epithets. Easily reflective and descriptive essays are charged with insatiable just for like. Like Lamb, as later reveals himself in his essays. He tells us something about his father, his love of painting, his appreciation of nature, his love of old books, his political affiliations, his literary taste, etc. What he puts forward in his essays is his real self. He draws the reader into his company with a compulsive autobiographical frankness and such reflective essays, like on going a journey and on the fear of death. His essays read like the scattered parts of unplanned autobiography. Hazlitt reminds his readers of Lamb as contemporary in more ways than one. Both Laslit and Lamb share the same literary interest, their love of paradox, their delight in nature, their passion for reading and quoting from classical authors. As a sayist, I think they should be regarded as complementing rather than revealing each other. However, as individuals, they challenge comparison with each other. Lamb is fundamentally a gentle and likable man, whereas Laslit strikes us as a hard and bitter personality. Critics speak of the rhythm of Hazlitt's prose, that is, his prose has a pleasing rhythm. There is no clash of sounds so delightful and elegant is Hazlitt's prose that are. L. Stevenson, himself a great master of prose, said, 
we are fine fellows but we can't write like William Hazlitt let's go now look about the introduction to on the feeling of immortality in youth there is a feeling of eternity in youth which makes us immense for everything to be young is to be as one of the immortals writes as lit in the present essay no young man lets the thought of death cross his mind imagines he will go on living forever this is the characteristic future of youth as it advances in years it is of course different as we grow old says is lit our sense of the value of time becomes vivid nothing else indeed seems of any consequence and the feeling of immortality in youth is an expression of the romantic spirit in that it gives an ideal view of glorious period of man youth Aisley feels that youth is the most joyful period in man's life. He has so many grand things to achieve in the future that he has no time to worry about death. He thinks that he is eternal and dreams of more novel and more exciting things to take place. In the exaltation of the moment, the sombre specter of death is not seen or felt. Life is seen as an extraordinary pageant and Aisley is in raptures over the amazing gifts of nature and enthusiastically he lists them while he is lingering over the beauties of fine arts the thought of attaining immortality by the greatness of accomplishments strikes him he want to be impeccable and perfection takes time on the young or impatient over the slow movement of time The difference between the old and the young lies in this difference of attitude towards time. After contrasting youth and age, Hazel it comes down to the last point, death. He regrets that death does not come to us when we are in the full flush of enjoyment. It advances slowly, plucking away faculty after faculty. It is a pity that everything is momentary in this world. Even the splendid impressions of youth do not say everything is there. transient and neither youth nor old age can offer absolute satisfaction to the lofty desires of mankind these are the thoughts that hazlitt gives expression to in this essay now look to the text on the feeling of immortality in youth no young man believes he shall ever die it was a saying of my brothers and a fine one There is a feeling of eternity in youth which makes us amends for everything. To be young is to be as one of the immortals. One of time indeed is spent, the other of remains in store. For us with all, it's countless treasures. For there is no line drawn and we see no limit to our hopes and wishes. We make the coming age our own. the vast the unbounded prospect lies before us death old age are words without a meaning of dream or fiction with which we have nothing to do others may have undergo or may still undergo them we bear a charmed life which loves to scorn all such idle fancies as in setting out on a delightful journey we strain our eager sight forward bidding the lovely scenes at a distance hail and see no end to prospect after prospect new objects presenting themselves as we advance so in the outset of life we see no end to our desire nor to the opportunities of gratifying them we have as it found to no obstacle no disposition to flag and it seems that we can go on so forever we look round in a new endless world full of life and motion and ceaseless progress and feel in ourselves all the vigor and spirit to keep pace with it and do not forest from any present signs how we shall be left behind in the race decline into old age and drop into the grave it is the simplicity and as it were abstractedness of our feelings in youth that so to speak identifies us with nature and our experience being weak and our passion strong makes us fancy ourselves immortal like it our short lived connection with being we fondly flatter ourselves is an indissoluble and lasting union 
as infants smile and sleep we are rocked in the cradle of disease and hushed into fancied security by the roar of the universe around us we quaff the cup of life with eager thirst without draining it and joy and hope seem ever mantling to the brim objects pressed around us filling the mind with their magnitude and with the throng of desires that we wait upon them so that there is no room for the thought of death we are too much dazzled by the joy gorgeousness and novelty of the bright waking dream about us to discern the dim shadow lingering for us in the distance nor would the world that life has taken up permit us to detach our thoughts that way even if you could we are too much absorbed in present objects and pursuits while the spirit of youth remains and unim- you unimpaired or the wine of life's drunk we are like people intoxicated or in a fever who are hurried away by the violence of their own sensations it is only as present objects begin to pall upon the sense as we have been disappointed in our favorite pursuits cut off from our closet ties that we by degrees became weaned from the world that passion loosens it hold upon futurity and that we begin to contemplate in a glass darkly the possibility of parting with it for good till then the example of others has no effect upon us casualties we avoid the slow approaches of sages we play at hide and seek with like the foolish fat skeleton in stern who hears that monster bob is dead our only reflection is so i am not i The idea of death instead of staggering our confidence only seems to strengthen and enhance our sense of the possession and enjoyment of life others may fall around us like leaves are mowed down by the sky sky of time like grass these are but metaphors to the unreflecting and buoyant years and overweening presumption of youth It is not till we see the flowers of love hope and joy with withering around as that we give up the flattering delusions that before led us on and that the emptiness and dreariness of the prospect reconciles us hypothetically to the silence if you want this video please subscribe share and comment thank you